Hey there, Knicks fans. Right? Hey there, Knicks fans. Hey there, Knicks fans. <laughs> hey there, Knicks fans. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> it's your it's your boy who's a little kooky right now. Jonathan Macker with you for another episode of the Knicks Film School Podcast. Um, you knew it was coming. Couldn't let the preseason go by without everybody's favorite uh pastime, women, children, elderly people. Everybody loves it. It's a KFS mailbag. Um, and of course, if it is a KFSL mailbag, you know what time it is, whose time it is. He needs entrance music at this point. He's become probably too famous for entrance music. I don't, I don't know. Chris Percy Einan song B and don't name some rapper who I've never heard of and will never listen to. Give me a song that I actually know. Oh, um, public service announcement by Jay-Z. You know, I have a lot more respect for you now than I did five seconds ago. That's awesome. That's I feel very. Like that's a good. <laughs> Andrew, like you should unmute yourself for the clapping. Um, job, job, well done. Really Chris. well done. Well done. Two millennials just very much appreciated that. <laughs> I I want to say something right now, and it would, I think I think nobody is too famous for intro music. Is the way to go about it. I and I think I, I think conversely, nobody is not famous enough for intro music. Uh, I yeah, think just, no, basically, so I think the everyone the deserves intro. Everybody should have intro music. Um, I was, we I went for a run, uh, this week and I put on predictably like, uh, whatever it was like late nineties, early two thousands hip hop and, uh, something else or maybe mid two thousands. I forget when that, when that dropped, but something else from that album came on and I'm like, man, this was a, this was a banger. And then I was starting to think about like, if I ever have a 40th birthday party and like a lot of people are there and I got intro music for my 40th birthday party, I would want public service announcement. Does that make me less Uh cool? More cool? No, that's, I think, I think the fact that, I mean, from your perspective, I think the fact that we came up with the same song would make you cool. I feel like, I feel like that. (laughs) Well, because if if it did, (laughs) well, yeah. How could it make you cool? It may not be cool, but for you, it's like an appreciation of older times. Um, but then again, you're the one who drafted like a whole bunch of old farts in our 2010 draft. So um, that's that's a I valued. I valued championships. And I got a whole lot of them. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, as we sit here and, and record this, it is uh, it's Thursday at about 715. Um, I don't know. Maybe we're going to miss out on some some kooky uh, IG live stuff from who knows who tonight. Um Hey, look, enough banter. You want to just get to the questions? I, I feel like we have a lot of good ones from from the very brief glancing that I did on Twitter today. But as always, um, I did not read the questions ahead of time. I, I may have I may have perused very briefly, but uh, these will be fresh off the dome as 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 always. Well, the other thing is that you you may have perused the selection of the the the, the pool of questions, but you haven't perused the specific no. uh, choices. So no. you know. For the listeners, there's a fair amount of um, lack of perusal here, uh, and the, and the time that I that I would have dedicated to thinking about answers to these questions was spent taking a 20 minute nap before this podcast because huge. again, I'm an old man. No, I'm in the I'm I'm taking naps, man. I just, it's a beautiful thing. It's midterm season. Let, let's get started though. We have SSB guy with our first question. And I'm glad that you said you think we have enough tape because I'm about to ask you about literally every single player that plays for this team. Jesus. Assuming Christ. everyone is healthy and including the backups, how would you rank our position groups from best to worst? That's a great question. That's really good. Um, so am I, well, I don't know. Either of you can tell me how to go about this. Am I doing Point guard, shooting guard, small. Yeah, okay. Not. I would not, think guards, wings, bigs. I would. Well, that's the, so. That's the that's the question. Ball, ball handle. Well, it's ball handlers, wings, bigs. You know what? I'll do. I'm. A, I think it'll be a better, a more fun answer if I do the all five positions. Um, you know, and like I don't want to get into like where where do you put Julius Randle? Is he a wing or? Um, big a guard, which I have a feeling as one of the questions I did have right, guard- at today. Oh. Wait, what did I say? This guy said big. guard. Wing or big. Wing or big. Wing or big. That's what I meant. Um, okay. Enough enough filibustering. Um <laughs> I 
can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to. I think I have to put point guard number one. I think I have to put point guard number one because of Kemba and Derrick Rose. And even if I don't, I'm, I'm considering like half of Emmanuel quickly for this category. I was going to say, I think it's deuce here. Based on I, I'm considering is. Kemba Rose, half of Emmanuel quickly and all of deuce. That's my point okay. guard group. And then um, and the only other, the only other strong consideration that I would give ahead of point guards would be power forward. And that is not because um, as Andrew will certainly quip about, uh, I think Julie uh, Obi Toppin is going to like make the, you know, the all, all NBA team this year. Um, I just think Julius Randall is, is that good. But I actually, this is kind of this is kind of a knock on my opinion of Obi that I'm putting power forwards after point guards because I, th- it I is. think yeah I think Derrick Rose is like that like I think Julius Randle's better than Kemba Walker but I think Derrick Rose is like that much better than Obi Top and I just because Derrick Rose is freaking awesome so point guards one power forwards two Ooh, from there it gets a little it gets interesting um, I, what is RJ technically for us is he small forward small forward okay sure he grew a little he's like six seven six seven and a half he's a small forward great um so then i will go small forward next just because i don't need don't need the pitchforks and torches on my lawn today sir uh so small forward third uh shoo hmm so now i'm down about the mitch the mitch hive is about to Everybody has a fucking hive. You. Can we get one guy on the damn team that doesn't have a hive that is just like, you know what? Whatever you think about him, I don't care. Um, I've been really impressed with Fournier uh, thus far. I, I was looking at his, I was keying in on his defense actually today for, for Friday's newsletter. Um, he hasn't hit anything, but uh, so basically him and quickly and Grimes, I guess I'll consider like half of Grimes as a shooting guard. Um, I'll go centers. I'll go centers. You know why? Partially because of Mitch, but mostly because of. Taj Gibson. So, and then I put shooting guard last. Mitch Nerland's Taj is pretty dandy, but we'll we'll save that for later. Taj, is, uh, what a gym. You, you can't you can't not love. Him. You know, as I read the newsletter this morning. I just I was happy you got to um, show him a little love in in there. He just he deserves it all. That's I'll like save more Taj thoughts for for later. Yeah, that's the jersey that's like the diehard must have. The new diehard must have, in my opinion. I'm gonna, like, I think, you know what it is? I haven't bought it. I told you I haven't bought a jersey in probably twenty some odd years. When they, if I could get the the whatever the seventy fifth anniversary edition is, the, the jerseys that they wore, you know, in the forties, I want to get that Taj jersey. It's gonna be hot. Clean, clean, clean. Observe and study. After a promising display during the preseason, what is this team's number one concern going into the regular season? I threw this at the beginning so that we can kind of build up from from upsetting talk. You know, yeah. Well, but no, I think I, it's a good question. So, I, I I think somebody asked me this on the post game the other day, and I struggled because the first thing that I thought of was just injuries. But outside of injuries, I think the answer that I came up with, um, and it's really the only, the only thing that I could come up with in the moment. Um, although I'll give you one more now. Um, I think it, it, concern is like uh, it's uh, probably too strong of a word, but I think in terms of if we are sitting here and being like, hey this is a top four seed in the East again, what will prevent us from being a top four seed in the East again? I think if you're looking at a team that's going to be in a top four, a top four team in the East this year, you're looking at a team that's probably going to have a top eight net rating. Cause I think the East is, is pretty good. If you could argue that the, the East is better than the West, or at least the top is so top seven, top eight net rating, even if they are number three or four in defense again, which is not a given because that's, you know, it's hard to control that stat year after year, um, unless you have Rudy Gobert in the regular season. Um, so long-winded way of saying in order to get to that level, the Knicks are going to need to get to like 10th, 11th, probably not much lower than that in offense. And I think it's really hard to make a jump of like 13, 14 spots in offensive rating, which again, that's what we're talking about here. Cause they were 24th last year without getting an elite shot creator in the off season. I've, look, I've, I've sung 
Kemba's praises. I love Kemba Walker. I love, I love the Fournier signing. RJ will be better. Uh, Obi will be better. I think Julius will be better. All these guys will be better, but that's a big jump. It's a really, it's a really big jump. And so that would be my, my concern there. And then the only other thing is, um, I don't want to say there's too many mouths to feed, but like, so no, I, I get have, where you're going. No, someone's going to have to sacrifice a little bit in that starting lineup. Um, thus far, it's it's kind of been Fournier, I I think. Um, you know, there's been a few instances where he's open in the corner. I've noticed, and the ball doesn't get it, get his way. Not necessarily that it's the wrong play always. Um, you know, but he's. I would guess he's probably going to be fourth in, in shot attempts in the starting lineup. Like, is he going to be cool with that? He was a guy that shot probably as much as Vucevic in some of those Orlando years. I would need to look it up, but it seemed like he shot a lot when he was down there. Um, but then again, he seems like he's on board and, you know, he got his money. Um, so, yeah, but I, I don't really have a lot of concerns. Well, he and Kemba said they know their job here is to space the floor for RJ and Julius. So, you know, whether that's um, clarity between them and the coaching staff and the front office in regards to why they were brought in or whatever it is, like Fournier – and the diversity in his shot profile that you get, especially in comparison to Bullock is just huge for, for Barry and Randall. hundred percent. I had and the I, same I, thought what? about um, mouths to feed. You know, I was at the first game and I was there last night. And what I noticed was we know last year it was kind of like feed Julius and that snowball gets rolling and yeah. we've got a game this year. It's like, we genuinely have a lot of guys that, can put the ball in the basket and in the I don't starting think Julius lineup is going to mind that though. No, but I'm saying what it looks like in the start, like Julius got his first touch, like his first like ISO touch, like six minutes in or something. It was like, um, it's, I don't know about guys getting hot early, you know, like I think we're going to see I, that love get spread around a little more often, see, which is not a bad thing, but you know, then no, I think you not. might not get those, those real, like he's burning us tonight games. Well, I, I think we're going to see what we saw in the third quarter um, against uh, against Detroit, which is like Julius will be more of in the flow of the offense as opposed to the offense for most of games. And then there will be times where Julius is like, all right, I I, I got this, which is like that's kind of, that's honestly the that's your that's where you want to be with your star player. And he is a he is a star player. So I think it's a good a good place to be. We are taking a trip, not back in time, but just uh, just out in time a little, just a little zoomed out. I need you to get the memory going here. Mike Perry wants to know who the best dunker in Knicks history was. Uh, I threw it at the front because we have a lot of different fun questions (sighs) and uh, I wanted to get you thinking early. So I Andrew has his answer. Andrew, give, give me an answer because I, I had a few names. That I know who he's thinking head. too. I think. Well, the guy that won three dunk contests. That was, okay, so the two names. <laughs> I my mind immediately went to the dunk contest, and I went uh, and I thought of Kenny Skywalker, uh-huh. um, and and Nate Robinson. <laughs> All due respect to the dunk contest. Um, spo- well, no, not spoiler alert for for the page my Patreon top seventy five. I don't have Vince Carter in top seventy five. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and it's because I don't really get like I, I'm not considering fucking dunk contests when I th- think about NBA. So like Nate had some dunks and I mean he dunked over friggin' Yao Ming. I mean that mm-hmm. was a thing that happened. That said, I'm not sure when I think of like the greatest Nick Dunkers, he is the first one that pops into my head. I tell you, the guy, man, when Spreewell threw it down. There was a ferocity and an anger to his dunks that was just it was it was really great. But I think you know who my answer honestly is gonna be? I can't believe I'm gonna say this fucking guy's name. No way. Uh, oh my god, John, I was waiting for like to come back and say uh, JR was probably- JR. It, it has to be J.R. Smith because JR when when he wanted to and he unleashed a few. In Dude, game those dogs. oops. Mm-hmm. There were uh, uh, he had some moments, and they were like there were there were not many humans alive that could do the shit that J.R. Smith could do. So I guess my answer is actually going to be J.R. Smith. 
That's not um, a sh- bad sh- pick. Yes, yeah, shout a bad out pick at all. And, and shout out to John Starks. Did compete in a dunk contest again. I don't think of John Starks as a dunker. And then the only other thing I want to say is um, Larry Johnson had obviously was not the healthy version of himself when he came here. But if you're asking me who. I, I would have to, because there may have been some other old guys that came to the Knicks past their prime. But like, if you're yeah. asking me, like, who do I like that spent a significant, that had a meaningful portion of their career in New York. Right, right. Also had a, a meaningful portion of their career as a dunker elsewhere. I would LJ would come to mind. I kid you not. When you were going through the Skywalkers and the, the spree wells, I was like, Jr. is the one person in game that I think of the man, behi- like, like the the backwards double clutch alley oop, the, the reverse from Prigioni, right? Well, he has yeah, one like the, that one of the playoffs. Yeah. In one of the playoffs against the Heat, and the one we're thinking of, I think, is against the Spurs. And then but, I was yeah. at the game. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the it was Jr.'s return game. Jr. and Iman Shumpers, I should say, return game after they were sent to Cleveland. But it was one of the first. It was either the first game or the first one of the first. And I went. It was the first game I ever took the Loras to. Um, and, uh, Jr. unleashed an alley-oop from LeBron in that game. And I'm, I'll, I don't remember the final score, but it was, it was not, not pretty. I'm just gonna, Smith making family memories. I'm just going to give everybody some homework. Go to YouTube, type in Jr. Smith, Gary Neal, and Jr. Yes. literally takes off from the foul line and dunks over him in game. And he was Kevin Harlan meets the moment with the, we just saw a man fly. And it was, it was so good. <laughs> That's good. That's my, good. That's my best camera. That was great. That was good. Thank you. Uh, what's up next? It's a, it's a tough impression to do. Next up from Ethan, we have, and I think I know where John's going to lean, but I, I like where the thought process here is going to take him. So I'm making him answer it anyway. Uh, more likely to happen. Randall makes the all NBA team again, or a non Randall Nick will be an all-star next year. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with, with Randall makes the all NBA team again for, as someone who wrote in as one of his preseason predictions that I did not think he would make the all NBA team again, not because I think he'll be bad. I just think it, things are, some other players will, you know, the media will, will be like, all right, we took care of Julius last year. Um, that said, I think he has a real shot. And, and I have to say my opinion may have changed a little bit since I wrote that because um, news today, uh, Mr. Mr. Williamson, apparently uh, not not feeling too great down in, in New Orleans, or at least they don't they don't want to put him on the court. One or the other. I don't know. I don't really care. Um, that's unfortunate for him. Um, but there's still a lot of competition for that spot. Um, but I would say Julius. And then because here's the thing, I, I think this is the year that maybe RJ gets, a, there's a lot of conversation like, Ooh, is, should we be talking about RJ Barrett for an all-star spot? And then he doesn't actually get the spot. It's just like, it's, you know, it's an honor yeah. to be nominated type of deal. I've been saying since well before preseason, after the off season that like RJ Barrett is going to get painted as a disappointment this year, like by the, the national oh, media. Like you not, think so? That, that, I don't, I well, don't see, even I don't think they're going to like, I don't think it's disrespect like normal. I think what they're going to do is the bait and switch and say, you yelled at us all summer for, for underrating this guy. And now he wasn't even an all-star and they're going to pull that bar all the way That's, up. And when he, I, and when he doesn't hit it, it's going to be like, up oh, failing again. So no, I, I'm, I'm ready for it. I could only see that if um, I swear I would have used this term, even if had the last week not taken place. If the, if the next season went such that RJ was a better player, but sacrificed his own numbers for the good of the team. I could see casuals. Um, I swear I was going to say it anyway. I could see casuals being like, see RJ sucks. He only averaged 13 points a game this year. Right. Um, right. That said, that said, I do not think that's going to happen. I think RJ is going to be second in the More. team in, in shot attempts. He's going to um, average more points this year than last year. I just don't think it'll be more than like two points more. I gun to my head. I think he'll average more points this year than he, than he did last year. He was at 17 point, what, six or eight? Seven, 17 point eight. I think he gets that up to like 19.6. Cool. 19.7. Guys, 20 points, 20 points a game is a lot. It's not, it's not easy to score 20 points a game as a 21 year old in the NBA. Six rebounds, three and a half assists. Something like, I know, that's, you know. I know you've, you've been calling this for a while. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, 
Good question. All right, next up. These are all good questions so far, by the way. Better question on the way for you because you get to wax poetic about 67. Jake Ross with Todd Gibson turning back the hands of time. What does our center rotation look like? Who finishes games? <sighs> I it, look. I there's there's this is this is not a this is a, an impossible question because Mitchell Robinson had such an odd year last year in that there was this like faux center comp starting center competition in preseason that kind of, I don't think it was a real competition. It was just like, we're going to say it was a competition. And then it's like, Oh yeah, Mitch is the starting center because he's Mitchell fucking Robinson. And then he got hurt and then he came back and Noel was already start was starting and had done pretty well. And then Mitch came and had probably the best game of his career. And then he got hurt a couple of days later. I, I struggle to fathom a world where if Mitchell Robinson is healthy, I'm not saying he's closing every game, but if you're asking me who's closing, like if you give me 10 games in a week and you're asking me all the centers are healthy, who's closing the most of the 10 games. I think Mitchell Robinson closes the most of the 10 games that said, I, I, there are, I could see myself predicting that there will be four different centers to close games within the span of 10 with like, give me Mitch for like five or six. Give me Noel for one or two. Give me Taj for one or two. And give me Julius Randle for one. I think it was meaningful that we saw Julius play alongside Amir Sims the other night. Um, I know Tibbs did the same thing last year. He played Obi and, and Randall. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but he he played them not in significant time together last, last preseason. And then we proceeded to see it for 30 minutes all of last year um, until the playoffs when he got desperate. Um, but I... I don't know. I, I have a. Um, I think Obi's shown a little bit of of rim protections this uh, this this preseason. We'll see if it carries over. Um, and I I my hope that I have zero conviction in, in thinking will actually come true is that Tibbs knows if you want to win in the playoffs now you have to be able to throw different looks at opposing teams and every team that succeeded with any modicum of, of anything in the playoffs last year did so because they had different looks that they could go to. And the Knicks had one look partially because they didn't have the personnel to throw multiple looks at teams. Now they fourth do. lowest payroll. You know, I, I, that's something yeah. I said all year. I was not going to hold against them. And you're not and wrong. That's something I said all year that they needed to address in the off season. Um, and they did, and they did very to, well to look on like at a, or what I think will be a success story in regards to what you just said. I think the golden state warriors are a great team to bring up. Um, be Elitza, Otto Porter jr. Like now that, you know, year two Wiseman, they have a lot of different lineups that they can throw at teams. Of course, when you have Mr. Wardell jr, you know, it doesn't hurt, but I think that, um, I think their off season moves were, were good. Like Moody, Kuminga, Bielitsa, Otto Porter Jr. Like that's a weird group of names, but when you're talking about adding them to Draymond Clay style, like I like the versatility there. And I think in regards to the center rotation, if Taj can come in and give you seven, eight minutes standing in the corner, teams actually have to pay attention to him. That's something I like, think to, uh, that's no, like some like, extra versatility. I think this, I think the shooting part of it is, is, is good, but like, the thing that is like Noel sometimes just isn't. I'm just gonna sound like I'm being a dick. He's just out there, dude. No, so they're, they're, listen, there are, <laughs> you're right. There, are, no, I, mean, I don't know how else to say. It. There are games when Noel Noel's just kind of a guy out there, and then there are other games where he looks like a man on fire and he really makes a difference and he has it going and he pumps the crowd up with steals or blocks, or whatever. Those are the games that he finishes. The games that he's just kind of out there, and and this is why it's a tough question to answer. In the up until the very end last year. Mitch would still have those games where you're just watching it and be like, man, he doesn't have it tonight. Head's not in it. Whatever it is, it's just something's not right. And if you combine that with Noel being just a guy, um, then those are the games Taj ends. I just, I'd like to think that Mitch year four, do we, do we finally do away with those games where you're watching and you're like, yeah, something's off with Mitch tonight. He's, he's not really focused. He's not whatever. Like you want to get paid? Fucking Mitch have, is closing every game that he's playing. 
if he wants to get paid, he he should. If he wants to get paid, he should. He needs to play like a guy who warrants closing every game. That is the yeah. way to say it. So we'll see if he does. Um, I think he does. I think as someone who has, uh, I don't want to say infamously, but like infamously been on a certain side of the Mitch debate, like I'm very much in on him this year. Um, based on, on everything, year. based on everything we heard from the off season, coach KP, um, and just, you know, I mean, he went home and was, I, I swear to God, that dude was lifting weights every single day. Um, you can't, you can't fake what is very apparent. He, he did put on a lot of muscle. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm with him this year. I think this will be a good year for him. So I, I think he closes games. I have that hope, but you're right about him needing to prove it. I think a lot of fans, because we know he can be so good, just kind of think he is that good. Now he's like getting yeah, there, it, totally getting there. And I think he will be there this year, but he hasn't M- been there yet, which is something to note. And M- NBA history is littered with guys who you wonder why they never fully figured it out. And there are different gradients to that. Like Anthony Randolph. I don't know if you know, if you know who that is, I know who uh, that is. Okay. Anthony Randolph is a guy who like never figured it out at all in games that matter. And, but there are other guys who were like, always seem to be like just on the cusp of really figuring it out and never fully could. And I'm not saying Mitch is, is that, or isn't that I just, we, we, we don't know. And there are many examples of guys who, who could never do it. So we'll, we'll see. Right. No, but we're, we're the KFS is in on Mitch for year four as I, is what I think the consensus seems to be. Giddy up. Baby. Um, giddy up. We're going to, Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize funny <laughs> funny's next. So okay. D- David Feudernick, uh, besides the most obvious choices, you know, Clyde, Pat, Mello, who do you think is the most popular Nick of all time? I noticed this question when I was, when I was looking, um, I did not think of what my answer would be. I Scott's honor. Um, okay. So the obvious ones that we're, we're excluding are Patrick Clyde and anybody else. Willis, I he guess. He said uh, Mello, Clyde Pat oh, and Mello. Mello okay. He excluded. <sighs> it's tough. So so I I obviously never saw this person play live. I'm pretty sure he retired before he did retire before I was born. Um my understanding or my 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 what I've been able to gather from just listening to people talk about those teams is that Dave DeBusher is probably the correct answer. Um, that said, wow. I never, I never saw David Busher play. Oh yeah. I mean, if you, if you add, just go talk to any person over the age of what would they have to be over 60, I guess, um, ab- about that, who watched that Nick team. Um, and they will, they will talk your ear off. And be like, so what, who, who's this David Busher guy? And then just be prepared to sit there for 10 minutes and listen to somebody wax. <laughs> um, I, I think the modern era answer would have been extremely easy. And it would have been Charles Oakley. And now it's not Charles Oakley anymore. For, for some, it might be. Uh, shout out Bernardo Zaraski. Um, But for others, it is not. <laughs> um, I, think the, I think the only, with all due respect to Latrell Spiewell, who is who's my, that would be my answer. I think the, the, I think the modern era answer is, is, is John Starks. Um, and I don't know. I mean, if you're looking for someone more niche than that, like people love the X-Men. I mean, Xavier McDaniel was here for one season and people friggin' love that guy. Um, oh man, but Anthony Mason, oh, Anthony Mason's up there too. This, this is a really good question. It's really hard. And I don't think like there's like Pablo Prigioni, like people love Pablo Prigioni for what he was, but would, would people love Pablo Prigioni if he wasn't this like, almost like a, um, Oh my God. It's like a, like a party favor. He was here for what? Two years. Like if he was here for 10 years, would he have that same kind of kitsch, kitsch, kitsch to him? Um, I don't know. The the Haslam. I don't even know what other player, like I think he down as Haslam just, but he, well, he's in a different category because he's a lifetime. um, Right. That's what I'm saying. Like he, he, he doesn't have that, you know? Yeah. So I, it's almost like this answer to properly answer it is, is to have like different categories. Um, And I didn't even mention Jeremy Lin. I mean, like, where do, what do you do with Jeremy Lin? Like, that's the that's the other one. I but like, people responded Bernard King. I don't. But is he like? 
I mean, look, everybody loves Bernard King. Um, I don't know anybody who doesn't have a, a nice thing to say about Bernard King, but I'm my just, generation you know what? is super lacking on knowledge of him. I, I, I to am, be honest, they, they probably are. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, all right. I'm going to make my life much easier than all of this. And I'm just going to, my answer is going to be Dave the Busher and we're going to move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I mean, I didn't disagree from the jump. Uh, just, I, I've read some, some stuff about, you know, back then and, and the Busher being not the but a guy, you know, Clyde was the, the superstar Tibbs mm. fan club. Trav wants to know, Great name. Two part question. One. Oh, and the get ready for the get ready for the questions. One realistic goals, timeline and accomplishments within the Tibbs tenure um, for for you. I would say, you know, I don't want I don't want you sitting here being like in 2026. They'll make it to the second. round. Uh, you know, realistic <laughs> conference goals? appearances, goals, goals timeline, timeline, accomplishments. accomplishments. Just, I don't know. I think well, timeline covers all three. Just, you I, know, what maybe what you think goes. Yeah, down. I don't I don't know. There's conference goals and, appearances. Yeah, I don't know what the, the difference sort. between goals and accomplishments are. Um, Tim's, I, Tim's goal is to win every game in the book. You know, that's we know that. I, number two. I, what oh, accomplishments? Oh no, this is the number two is lofty though. I feel like it, the the answer, but you know, what accomplishments would it take for Tibbs to go down as the greatest Nick coach? Okay, so let me answer these one at a time. So I'm uh, internal. I told you two is lofty. In, internal goals for the organization. I would imagine the 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 organization would like to win a playoff series this year. Um, I know internally they thought at one point last year that their goal changed at some point last year to winning a playoff series last year. Um, that I, that I'm confident in, in sitting here and, and saying, but at that not that that should surprise anybody. Their goal should have been to win a playoff series last year. Um, I think their goal this year is to win a playoff series um, and that anything else would be gravy. And I think by hook or by crook, I, I would imagine behind the scenes they they think that they should be contenders by next season. Um, meaning 20, 22, 23, um, uh, how they get there. You know, I don't know. The only other, the only other thing I would say and why I, why I hesitate to, to even offer that is because I, <laughs> I think Leon Rose, and whoever else said it at media day means it when they say we're, we're going to play our cards. Like we're, we're going to play this thing smart. And the reason why I say that is if like, is if, if they really think after this year, they have something really special in RJ Barrett and, or whatever other, another young player or other young players, and they make a judgment call based on the superstar talent that becomes available, which we know it will, that it is not worth it for us to make X trade at this time. And, and in their judgment that may push back the, the, the calendar for contention in extra season. I I think they would do that at the same time. If they were to do that, then I think internally they would believe, all right, if we're keeping these guys, we still think, even if we hold on to the guys that we're keeping because we think they're so damn good, we should still be contenders. In, right. Uh, so I, either, I, I think either way you cut it, internally, they feel like they should probably be contenders by 22, 23. Um, as far as Tibbs being the greatest coach in, in, um, Several in Nick's history. pieces of jewelry. No, I mean, look, it's Red has two and a finals appearance in a very different league. Um, but those, are, I mean, those accomplishments were significant. Yeah, <laughs> I I, just, I mean the question is if Tibbs, because here's the here's the thing, Red Red also came in when the organization was bad, and he was a scout, and then he became coach, and he turned them around. But he was he was a contributing factor to getting the talent there. So I think that's why Red, I mean that's why Red's Red's name is up in the rafters because he he played an integral role in in multiple ways. Um, so I guess that would be my way of answering this would be he would need at least two. He would need at least two yeah. titles. I had the same thought too, yeah. you know, and then assuming that includes, you know, other appearances in the playoffs, you know, decent amount of I, wins, all that good stuff. If he if he won two titles, it I mean, shit. That would be <laughs> 
I was going to say with what you were saying about um, pushing the cards, you know, like I think they just did that when you were saying like, Oh, it's not worth it at this time to deal these players. Like I, I want to say Damian Lillard would be wearing orange and blue. Like right I now. I don't think that's if, been on the table yet. I mean, I'll look, you, you may know something. I don't, um, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I table. probably don't know something you don't, but I, I just think like they had the pull and offer and nothing I, happened besides. I, I wonder whether, I because I, I don't think the situation in Portland ever got to the point where Dame asked out. I, I feel like that would have been reported, but I wonder. Well, it was if, allegedly, but well, I, no, remember, I, well, all I, that fun stuff. I wonder if the Knicks ever got to a point where they felt if we made the, the push, would that have changed things over there? I don't, I, but I, no, I don't. They I definitely don't. thought that. I mean, they, they think about everything, the front office thing. Of course they, they have. As, the, as Dr. As, Strange. It's literally their job. Just the Doctor Strange, their job. They, fourteen million outcomes. Figure out what they want to do. I, that's it. That's what their job good, is. Yeah. Good, good, good reference. Well, I, I use that. I, I, I've ever since uh, we hired Leon, I've called back to that because, like, I was like, we are so deep in the pit. <laughs> they got to pull us out real swift. Um, we have a question next from frequent asker. Ray Marcano. He yeah, I asks, think this is the other one I saw. He asks about Mr. Quickly. Okay. And, oh, no, uh, I didn't see this. Never mind. Ah, Ray, wants, Ray says, Quick seems to be driving to the basket a little more, and instead of floating, going to that little scoop shot. He's guessing this is by design. What's the ceiling on an IQ who can add penetrating consistently to his you know three and float game that seems to already be there? I mean, if it's if it's good penetration, he could finish. Oh man! Um, <laughs> yep, my thoughts too. Oof. So it's funny because I, I wrote this the other day that like I think you know we we keep talking about Emmanuel quickly. Is he a point guard? Is he not a point guard? And like thinking of him in because ter- I do think if he. I think his ceiling is a as is the case with almost any NBA player, with a couple of exceptions, Manu Nobly being the probably the most recent famous one. Like any any NBA player's ceiling is as a starting player. Um so I don't I can't imagine Emmanuel quickly ever starting for a contending team at the two guard position. If he's starting for a team that's really good, he's starting at the point guard position. And we always get to this well that means he needs to be a point guard. Like how is it, you know, but he doesn't really depending on the talent that is surrounding him. If he just needs to be able to do like basic stuff and there's a wing initiator on the team, in addition to Julius Randall to do all that. This is a long winded way of saying that. Like, I think as much as the penetration is important, I do still think we need to see a little bit more development in the, in the, the point guardy, aspects of the game that said for as much as the offense looked clunky against the um, Pistons in the most recent preseason game, when, when I was the really backups, frustrated at, when, at that yeah, time, it, man. It, it was frustrating. Cause he, and look, he, but he didn't run the team. Well, but, but again, I don't know if that's the fairest way to judge because on those backup units, he's not with top end NBA talent. If you put him as a starting, I'm not suggesting the Knicks do this, obviously, but if you put him as a starting point guard around with top end NBA talent, and he's not really initiating the offense as much, and you have, uh, again, a wing initiator plus maybe Randall and like whatever, like, will that make his job easier? And I've just said all of that. And now I'm thinking to myself, well, is that really the best use of him or is the best use of him to be exactly what he is now, which is a six man. Um, and a guy who comes in and he, he messes shit up and he'll finish every other game. And to that end, I think the pen, penetration would go a long way. And what is his ceiling? Um, six man of the year. Like, yeah, sure. Six man of the year. That's, that would be what I would put his ceiling on. So I'd, I'd be thrilled with, by the way. Oh, the ceiling. I think. I'm going to come out as um, offended by this. I think that's uh, fair. I, <laughs> look, I, I love Emmanuel quickly as much as anyone. I promise you that. But like, 
I ju- <laughs> it's a it's a it's a unique player type. He's a small guard. Uh, right. He does not naturally have point guard. I'm not saying he's a point guard. He's not so you, obviously you, a point guard right now. I think he's going to be better than Jordan Clarkson is right now, though. So, like the name, listen. If he is, then that's fine. Jordan Clarkson's really damn good too. Jordan I'm, Clarkson's I'm not a, an a underrater of, of Jordan Clarkson. But like, let's let's look at a name like D'Angelo Russell real quick. That's a guy who I think personally, and for over a year, I've said this is best suited as a sixth man. Um, that's not because I don't think he can be a starter. It's because of how much he wants the ball and how effective he is with it. You know, and I think he's best serve being the best six man in the league uh, rather than being a really mad starter that could perhaps hinder his yeah. fellow starters. Now, I don't think IQ hinders anybody. He's just, he can shoot from 35. That spacing is ridiculous. Um, I think if he has consistent paint pressure, my ceiling would be more like if uh, he, dude, he has a six, nine wingspan. Like if CJ McCollum and like Frank Delakina had a child, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> Well, that's that's a player if he can put consistent C- pressure on the rim. Man. CJ McCollum is the best floater in the league, aside from like I don't know Emmanuel um, Quickly. <laughs> well, no, Emmanuel Quickly. Yeah, there there he's are several. Other guys. I'd say Rashawn Holmes is up there. That's one of my dark horse picks for best floater in the league. That's a watch more Rashawn. That, that is a different category of. Don't look at me second. like that. <laughs> No, he he's is just, good. we're talking about we're talking about guards. Here. Anyway, okay, go yeah, to the next question. All right. The next question is actually really fitting for your answer to a previous question, and it comes from locker room. It became green room, was it? KFS green room champion Mensa. Room. <laughs> Whoa, KFS green room champion. Mensa Smith, Mensa, a.k.a. R.J. Barrett's max contract, wants to know what percentage chance you give the Knicks to win a playoff series this year. He adds in that as the current executive member of the Knicks are going to be the three seed committee, he thinks whoever we're going to play in the first round is going to give us trouble no matter what, just because the East is so good this year. Yeah. Percent percent chance that we win a playoff series if he had to put a number up. There's not going to be any such. I mean, unless you get matched up with a team who's dealing with injuries, um, there's not going to be any such thing as an easy playoff series. No, but if you have year. right now, someone says right now, what's the percent chance that the New York Knicks win a playoff series this year? Your two digit answer is. Oh, I just got that, Andrew. Um, my two digit answer is you're assuming it's two digits. How do you know it's not under 10%? The first because the first could be zero. That's true. Um, I knew you were going to say that. And I, I came up with the retort in advance. Good, good job. Um, well, it's less than 50. That's more than 10. I was going to say 35. So I, I, I like where you're, I like where you're starting. <laughs> just to, just to keep it clean. I'll do 33.33. I think they got about a one in three shot because just if I, if I play this out. Oh, no, they could get I, matched you know up against Brooklyn in the first round and. You know Kyrie what? I don't could know. Hold return on. extravagantly, and you know maybe they Hold squeeze I know. out. No, I know he'll make a big let, deal out of being back. I just know it. I know. Let me let me put some let me really put some math to this because if they're if they're at three or it's just, okay. Hold on, I'm gonna actually <laughs> math. I'm gonna do math for for a second because I have to factor in if they're at three or four seed, they're getting home court advantage. I'm giving them a slightly higher chance of getting out of the first round, something like fifty five percent. Uh, 55, 60. If they're the five or the six seed, it's lower. It's like 45, 40. Um, so those two even out, right? So if they're the three, four, five or six seed, I'm basically giving them 50, 50, except do I think there's a better chance that they are a three or a four or a five or a six that factors in as well. And then I got to factor in the possibility that they could drop down to seven or eight, which I don't think is crazy at all. I think that's in the cards. It's possible. Um, I may not think it's likely, but I think it's possible. And then factor in, okay, on the whatever, 20, 25% chance they're a seven seed, then the odds of them getting out of the first round are probably zero. So I have to factor that in as well. Um, so right. all that all that math in my head, I think I'm going to arrive at the answer I was going to give two minutes ago, which is about 33% chance. 33.3 repeating. All there right. you go. I, listen, I like it. You know, my, I, I told you my number was 35. So Andrew? I, 
For those of you that th think John is not being positive enough about his projections for the Knicks this year, <laughs> tune in to next week's <laughs> Patreon when he and Jeremy go through their full preseason predictions. Uh, the text that John referenced that you guys heard him say, I just got that, Andrew, was me yelling at him, do not spoil Patreon. And now we get to tease it because you heard what John thinks about winning a playoff series. But you'll get to hear on the Patreon pod which playoff series that might be. And I, yeah, and we had uh, some fun. We had some fun with that. Uh, well, so yeah, Chris, don't worry. No, the page, the Patreon shows oh, are okay. fun. Okay, you're in. There you I go. love. Those I'm, no, I'm just saying. I'm saying those are those are those are good. We have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we're gonna go cross country, like half cross country for this next question. Um, it is unrelated to the Knicks, and that is why I am now Ooh. going to relate it to the Knicks before I ask it. And that is, you know, I guess keep in mind um, this team's big man, notable big man. When you answer this question, Chip Murphy. Oh, geez. I know he's asking. I know I did, he's. Asking, I saw this, and I did not. I know he's asking this either. because he and I disagree vehemently on this team. I think they're over. We'll cash. He thinks they're under will cash um, enough on both of our sides to have listed them as our mo one of our most confident picks. I said, I'm very confident that the wolves over will hit. He said, he's very confident that the wolves under will hit. What is there? If he wants to know, it's like 35, dude, it's like 34 it and a half. High? Something. Okay. That high. That's nothing. Well, for, for John, what do you think of the Timberwolves this season? And I, you know, I connected it to their center because that might be, a thing or not. Um, I mean, look, it, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I don't, I don't think I trust them this year to be good. I think they're interesting. And uh, could they be good? Could they be a play-in team? Could could they be a you know an A seed? I don't know. Yeah, maybe sure. Um, I just play in thirty-eight wins. Play in, I think, is like super fair. Okay, that's you. Um, we're we're doing our wins draft on Saturday. Uh, feel free to remember that then. Uh, I just <laughs> look. There is a ton of organizational stability in the West. There is a ton of organizational competence in the West, and there are a ton of really good players in the West leading good teams. So um, even if Carl Anthony Towns finally does come out and have the season that we've been hate waiting for him to have for seemingly some time, I still, what, what's yours? Yeah. This is year seven. So yeah, it's, it's been a while. I still don't know. Will that necessarily make Minnesota better than like the Blazers? Um, you know, or I'm trying to think of some other, like or the Clippers, uh, you know, to, I, to say nothing of those upper echelon Western conference teams, you know, um, like, am I betting my life on the fact that the Timberwolves are going to be better than the Kings? Um, at this point, I'd probably bet on them being better than the Pelicans, but that's about it. Um, but again, like the Spurs, like, you know, we, 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 again, I'm not spoiling next week's Patreon, but like the Spurs, everyone, everyone talk about sleeping. Everyone's sleeping on the Spurs. Um, why? Because they don't have top end talent. Carl Anthony Towns is a top end talent, right? Tim Rule should be better than the Spurs. Okay. Wake me when that happens. Um, so I'm, I'm probably a little lower on Tim Rules than, than you are, Chris. I don't know. Josh Primo. We'll, we'll see. He, he looks like a different player than what we saw at, at Bama. I think he just played his role really well. And I totally get why he was maybe going to shoot up boards. I think that kid might be good. And I, we were definitely all very shocked by that pick. So, you know, I, I hope things go well for the Spurs, but like, I don't know. I'm thinking about teams like the Kings and the Spurs and I'm just like not moved. And I think, Edwards, who I like, I love Ann Edwards. And I, I like Ann, Edwards too. I like Edwards. I am, I'm, I love Ann. And I think him under Finch last year was great as a rookie. I think it would be wrong of me because of the extent to which I hyped up RJ Barrett and his ability to get through the adversity of his rookie year. 
to not be super high on Edwards too, because he came out once they hired Finch and put up like 22, six yeah, no. or something. And, like and he that. was, he was a little bit more efficient. He still had some like crazy, you know, you're six for 24 games or whatever, but yeah. Um, but no, he'll, I think you're it, look, too. I, I think yeah. Edwards was a, a lot. I, I was a lot more. I came away uh, after last season, a lot more impressed by Anthony Edwards. than I thought I was going to going into his rookie year. I'll just say that. Yep. All right. Final next. question. Final, Final question. question. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And um, we're going to allow you the ability now to travel where in time you'd like. Alex Trateros wants to know. Shout out to Alex. Oh, uh, hold on. Congratulations to Alex. He's getting married this weekend. Oh. Um, big shout out to him. Alex is like a super, super nice guy. Super cool dude. I just went on his podcast a few weeks ago. Um, so congratulations to him and his uh, bride. to be. Hope, hope they have a wonderful wedding and uh, many, many happy years after that. If you could write the biography of any past or current Nick. Now that is coach. That is player. That is executive. Oh, wait, that do is- I get access to the player or the person? Who who would it be and why? That was the question. So I would think you would have to go with people who are alive to get access to them. Yeah, Pat Riley. Oh. Oh. I knew that that's was the coming. one. I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. Sit in a room and fucking talks about Riley for hours on end. That's the one. <laughs> it's, it's not. I mean, okay, so that's the obvious. Let me actually think of a different answer because that's that's the easy number one for me. Um Hmm. If you want, we can, we can make this a, like we can break it into three and you can do your, your coach, your player. And then we have your exec, but well, no, that's, or, or does Riley count as the coach? Executive. I was going to say he counts he, as the well, coach. He, the have. reason he doesn't, the reason he only counts as coach is because, or he, and why his story is so fascinating because they didn't want to make it him an exec. Um, yep. The exec that I would choose Oddly enough, it wouldn't be Phil Jackson because Phil is already, you know, he's literally an open book. He's written how many, nine of them, whatever it is. I've read them. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't think there's much left to tell in that story. So it would not be Phil Jackson. Um, like, who do I want to spend time? To, like, I actually, this is going to sound fucking crazy. Sitting and talking to Isaiah. That was, I think if Isaiah was going to be, that was going to be my guess. And I think at this point in his life, and stage of his career. I bet you Isaiah would be pretty forthcoming. No, he just like just a couple months ago on Twitter, someone got in an argument with him and he was still defending trading. Oh, was he? Uh-huh. As if like he didn't do anything negative. So, I mean, ju- you know, just from he, uh, he was like the Knicks drafted every year I was there. All right. <laughs> That's great. Good. Good for you. Isaiah. Um, I mean, just from a, like picking the basketball brain of someone who is maybe who has maybe seen as much and been around as much and been in on as much as I don't know, 10 people in the history of basketball, Donnie Walsh, you could do worse than Donnie Walsh. Um, So that I think maybe that, I think maybe Donnie Walsh would be my executive. Although, I mean, shout out to Leon Rose. Cause again, he's, I mean, he's been in those rooms, made those deals, but I think I I would say Donnie, I was going to say what if Leon came with Wes, because they are a package deal, those two. We know this. If Leon I mean, came Wes. with Wes, that's it. That's you the know what one. though. I'm not. I'm not the person to write World Wide West's biography. That's. Not, I'm not that I think I can write anybody's fucking biography. To, to be clear, I really need, like, spike to write that. I'm really not suited to write William uh, World Wide West's biography. I think I would be able to cobble together something decent on Donnie Walsh, though. I'd be able to ask him the right question. <laughs> cobble. Cobble. I love um, I love the Macri verbs. So the so executive Donnie Walsh, uh coach uh Pat Riley. And just say free well and, and get and it. And over. Just, just real quick, just so I, I don't want to seem like I'm disrespecting the, the man who I just interviewed on this podcast two weeks ago. Jeff Van Gundy, I feel like, has shared so much of himself on broadcasts now for years and years and years and years. I feel like we have a pretty good idea. Of and he and he also just shared a lot with me, um, uh, you know. So, uh, yeah, I um, that's the only reason I, I wouldn't say Jeff. And then player, oh man, this is hard. It, so it has to be someone. It's it has to be spree for you, dude. I don't know that I'm that interested in the trust Um, 
I couldn't have fathomed another answer. Uh, I, 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 I swore you were going to go spree over Pat, over Starks, over. Eh, I don't know. H2. I mean, I know maybe I H two O because he wor- he's still works with the team. No, no, not really. I, you know, I mean, again, I, I, I think the obvious answer was Ewing, but. Um, oh, I just, I just got the answer. I just, I just figured out what the right answer is, and now we'll see if you get it, and then I'll tell you what the right answer is once you get. It. There's, I just, I, the answer I just came up with. There's no better. I swear. I'll I mean, put it's like on. fucking. Is it like Stefan Marbury? No, it's, I thought I was Clyde. I don't. So here's this is going to sound harsh. No, I'm fascinated in what Clyde has to say. I, like I being think Clyde, on top of the world that long ago. That's like I'm, that's nuts, dude. There are books about Clyde. Yeah, I I have a. Do you have one second? Hold on. Good. Well, I'll talk to Chris while y'all John goes and gets a book. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning into the next home school podcast. We'll be wrapping up in just a few seconds. Chris, if you could write a book about one Nick, who would it be? Oh, Carmelo Anthony. It's Mello. Okay. I, what I, I angle would it be? Like the- there's so much to say about his time here and why it was so weird. Why the end of it was so weird. Whenever something is weird, it's not actually weird. You just don't get it is what I've learned. And like, I want to get it. I want to get exactly what happened from tidbits and whatever. Like you can piece together stuff about Phil and whoever else. Like, I I think the guy who was the face of New York city for like six or seven years has some stuff to say. And I'd love to hear. Hey, that is is an original edition of rock and steady. Um, I'll read the whole title rock and steady, a guide to basketball and cool by Walt Frazier and Ira Burkow, um, with an introduction by Bill Russell, as it were. Uh, I found this in a, in a used bookstore, um, and it is one of my Steel. prized possessions. It sits right no next to my intended. Walt Frazier uh, signed basketball. Um, it's not that I don't I don't love Walt. It's not that I don't I wouldn't be interested in uh, a, a writing a biography about him. I just I don't know how reliable of a narrator he is at this point. Um, he's you know um, yeah I just I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of, he, he, I feel like we hear on broadcasts a lot of his memories of that time. And I don't know how in depth he could, I'd want to get someone who was like in their forties, fifties like that, who could really, like is still really can, can recall back. Um, man, I, I may have for player. I may just have to give the boring answer of viewing. Um, his yeah, building. I, I'd say, I'd say you, I'll go with you. For the player. Well, then, Sorry. John and Andrew, that would wrap us up for today. That up. That is, okay. Those are the, the answers oh. to the, the questions that the listeners had post. You ready for this? Post pre season, pre opening night. So that that little that little John's got a bobblehead. What what's what, what do you got going on back there? Is that a Clyde no, action figure? It's a Clyde action figure. Yeah, he's got oh. those Clyde which I tried figures. to put up a shelf in my little recording studio here, and I always I keep knocking it down. So I think I may have to <laughs> adjust adjust. Gonna give up on the give up on the shelf and give well, up on the shelf. Thank you this everyone for listening. No, thank this you. this was so, fun as usual Chris because signing us I, off? I like I like getting to I like getting I like getting to annoy John. Take I'm doing away, like Chris. no. Yeah, I always get like out. a mini. No, no, out, I do like a I do like a mini sign out, and then like Andrew or John signs out. I thought that's how. It, I, I mean, I can sign. Well, I, what, the, for, what is there? I didn't what is host, there to be promoted? I didn't host um <laughs> what is the show for the first promoted? time in whatever it was three years. I might as well let someone else sign off at this point. Go ahead, Chris. You got it. We believe in you. Plug the Patreon. Wow. Tell people to go give us five stars. Oh yeah, no. Next week. All that. So, long story short, if the Knicks are playing a basketball game at halftime of that basketball game, I'll be live on Twitter. At post game of that basketball game, John is live on YouTube. That's two live streams per basketball game. Huge. KFS Patreon exclusive pods. John's unfiltered um, thoughts on top topics that I think he would get like, like just the all time list and stuff. Like he get yelled at so much if these were out. So, so they're in the Patreon. They're it's locked away. I just the got ball. an angry, I just got an angry text. Um, 
oh, from, from Yash, yeah. from Yash a <laughs> minute ago because I had I had Giannis. Well, don't you, just because you did something on your list that people can go to Patreon and find out about. He's yeah. right. Got to. He's Yash is. I just want to say <laughs> Yash is right, and it. I, I won't it's, spoil. The okay, picture. what I will say is it's regarding John's placement of Giannis, and that's all you'll who. Say. Who, by the way, and people, this, <laughs> listen, this was in the this was in the free <laughs> this was in the free newsletter, so I could I could say this. Uh-huh. He was in the category of guys that I literally wrote. I did not need to look up any stats for any of these players; they are automatic, no doubt about it. Like, and and there were only forty two of those guys. So Giannis is in that group. No one, no one's sleeping on Giannis. Yash, you hear me? No one's sleeping on Giannis. <laughs> Fucking casual. Go keep going, Chris. Well, the same way that I would would say that I would say don't sleep on <laughs> don't sleep on the KFS merch store <laughs> or, or the Patreon <laughs> everything has gone what? to Chris, shambles. you said you had this keep it thank together. you keep it you guys are falling apart how am I supposed to keep listen that's the job that's the job we are doing that's the great job. check out the KFS halftime and post game live streams check out the KFS Patreon and merch store plug and already Chris and <laughs> I'm still very excited for our event on November 17th. Yes. Uh, at the time. camp fest at the garden. I'm going to, I'm going to bring it up and get everyone excited about it. That's going because it's, it's an exciting time. So it is. Thank you. Exciting thank time. you to you guys for, for accompanying this mailbag journey. Um, and I'll see you at the, the 17th in person at the latest. Huh? How Great. about that? Great job, Chris. Thank you, uh, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you for uh, producing this episode. Uh, one more shameless plug. Don't forget, check out uh, Final Review Yeah, uh, this week with uh, my good friends, Andrew Claudio and Bernardo Zorowski, as they talk about, is it the greatest horror movie of all time? I guess you'll have to listen to find out. You'll just have to listen and find out. <laughs> you gotta out. see. You gotta be Halloween. in the know to know, you know? Halloween. Um, it's, uh, but no, this is the seventh episode. The first six have been have been awesome. Uh, final review. Look it up wherever you get your podcasts. If you like movies, or even if you don't, you just want to hear two people having an engaging conversation. On that note, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Andrew. And we will uh, see you for another episode uh, very soon. There we go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That was awesome. Oh man. Yeah, man. <laughs> I was wondering if this plane was going to land. It landed. We got, we got, <laughs> I mean, we may have landed it like Denzel. The casual flight, shit. Not, no, that, exactly. that, it's that, Denzel. And- <laughs>